Joy to the world. Joy to the world. So many people sing this song year after year in vain. Sure, they put on the joy mask, but on the inside, there's this growing feeling of sadness, which seems to be accentuated at Christmas time. And I'm not talking about non believers, I'm talking about people who profess faith in Jesus Christ. Research even suggests that there's a significant uptick in suicide rates following Christmas. A 40% uptick. Why? If Christmas is supposed to be a season characterized by joy, love, and peace, then why such widespread depression? Where is the disconnect for so many people who claim to know Jesus? And perhaps the most important question, what is causing such a growing number of people, inside and outside the church, to view the world through such a distorted lens. There are lots of reasons that people give as the source of their depression at Christmas time. Listen to what Psychology Today magazine has to say about the issue. For some people, they get depressed at and even angry because of the excessive commercialization of Christmas with the focus on gifts and the emphasis on perfect social activities. Others get depressed because Christmas appears to be a trigger to engage in excessive self-reflection and rumination about the inadequacies of life and a victim mentality in comparison with other people who seem to have more and do more. Still others become anxious at Christmas because of the pressure, both commercial and self-induced, to spend a lot of money on gifts and incur increasing debt. Other people report that they dread Christmas because of the expectations for social gatherings with family, friends, and acquaintances that they'd rather not spend time with. And finally, many people feel very lonely at Christmas because they've suffered the loss of loved ones or their jobs. Now these sound like pretty good reasons to be depressed, don't they? And of course, depression, anger, resentment would be most people's natural response to stresses like these. But it doesn't have to be constant bombardment of a false philosophy presented to us by the world through media, advertisements, movies, and television. It's created an illusion that so many Christians have bought into. It's a strategic lie designed by our enemy. And the lie he so desperately wants you and I to believe is that this world is our home and that our joy comes from the same sources as everyone else here. People long to experience the joy we sing about at Christmas time and will grasp at anything that seems to offer it. In most cases, though, people end up settling for a cheap imitation of true joy, and it never fails to leave a deep sense of regret, dissatisfaction, and, of course, depression. So the question you should be asking yourself is, why? Why can't I find true joy in having my pleasures met? Well, the answer is... You can. God is not at all displeased by our pursuit of pleasures. Listen to what C.S. Lewis wrote. It would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures, fooling about with drink and sex and ambition, when infinite joy is offered us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum, because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. So God doesn't want your life to be void of pleasure, as so many people think. He wants only the greatest of pleasure for you, which can only be found in Him. All else is merely cheap imitation. 
You see, the expectation is that if we get what we think brings other people joy, we assume we'll have it too. That's the lie. That's the sham. And we fall for it hook, line, and sinker. Christian, are you seeing the world through a warped and cracked lens? Remember Ralphie from A Christmas Story? So many Christians are viewing the world through a warped and cracked lens designed specifically for them by the enemy. You see, you've been told that your joy is dependent upon whether or not you get along with your family at Christmas dinner, or whether or not you even have a family to eat Christmas dinner with. You've been told that your joy is dependent upon your ability to afford the right gifts. You've been told that your joy is dependent upon how many Christmas parties you get invited to, or how well liked your party is. You've been told that you're not allowed to have joy if grandma just died two weeks ago, if your father is an alcoholic, or if your brother is in the military and can't be home with you to celebrate like he always is. Yep, your joy is only allowed if your life matches what the world says it should look like. But the Bible says something completely different. In the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8, it says, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. So many Christians today have been taken captive by a false philosophy, which leads to unmet expectations, a false hope, and a pursuit of a flimsy circumstantial joy which fades as quickly as the latest iPhone. A few verses later, Paul, who wrote this letter specifically to Christians, goes on to say, Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of the world, why, as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? It's time to take off those cracked glasses, Christian, and see the world that you're supposed to be divorced from as it truly is. Your hope at Christmas, it isn't found in the former objects of your desire. It isn't found in your family or your friends or in your church. Your hope isn't even found in a baby born in a manger 2,000 years ago. No, your hope is in the fact that that baby grew into a man lived a sinless life, suffered and died the most gruesome death a person could ever endure, and then defeated death by rising from the place that they buried him, breaking the chains that held you captive since your birth. This is your hope. This is the lens through which you could view the world in all of its brokenness if you'd only put on the glasses. But like a dog who returns to his vomit, so a fool repeats their folly. You know the truth, Christian, and yet you put those old cracked glasses back on again and again, year after year, because it's what everyone else around you is wearing. Break free from the slavery of the world this Christmas, and remember the infinite joy offered you through Christ alone. Thank you.